Thank you very much, colleague ministers. I will read a brief statement and take a few questions. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Let me begin by welcoming you all to this press conference, which comes after recent incidences of violence in Bait Bridge, Mavuku, and Epworth. On behalf of the government of Zimbabwe, I would like to thank all peace-loving Zimbabweans for refusing to take part in last week's foreign-sponsored protests. Those violent protests are counterproductive as they may result in loss of life and the destruction of property. The security situation currently prevailing in the country is uh, generally peaceful and calm, though there are individuals and the groups that are calling for a repeat of events that unfolded last week. Let me warn the instigators behind the intended protests that they will face the full wrath of the law. It has come to our attention that the Western-sponsored regime change agenda has intensified, as evidenced by the involvement of some hostile foreign embassies in the recent unsuccessful attempts to bring the country to a standstill. It is in this context that foreign elements are being warned against interfering in Zimbabwe's internal affairs. We therefore remind these elements that Zimbabwe is a sovereign state whose decisions are made internally by Zimbabweans themselves. It is common knowledge that the social media is awash with messages of intentions to destabilize the country through violent protests. We are fully aware of the activities of politically affiliated organizations and individuals who are inciting the nation through misrepresenting facts and falsifying information. Government accepts that Zimbabweans have a legitimate right to present petitions, but these rights must be exercised, exercised peacefully. Section 59 of the Constitution refers Legitimate concerns should be addressed through legitimate means and not violent protests which may infringe on, another, on other people's rights. This government is committed to act in the best interests of its citizens, hence the need for the involvement of citizens in decision-making process. We urge organizations and individuals to submit issues of concern to relevant government agencies or departments for consideration. It should be understood that some policies are meant to address particular challenges and they may not be permanent. And that policy making is an ongoing process where decisions are made to suit prevailing situations. The ZRP, whose mandate is to protect life and property, under Section 219 of the Zimbabwe Constitution will be out in full force to deal with any disturbances that may arise and they protect the same. I, I want to assure commuter operators, businesses and the places of work that they will be given full police protection. Arrangements have been made for the provision of additional transport for commuters throughout the country. In conclusion, I urge members of the public to desist from engaging in illegal protests that anti-government elements have tried to use as a strategy to undermine a legitimate government. I also urge the media to report objectively and avoid the fueling violence. To all Zimbabweans, I am urging all of you to remain vigilant and not to be passive recipients or consumers of information which is meant to persuade, brainwash, mislead or incite you to resorting to unlawful actions. This is the end of this short press statement. Thank you. We'll take a few questions. Diana. 
Yes, Brian. Ani? Brian Ungwe. Brian Ungwe. Yes. Di Ungwe upu. Yes, just Ah, we just sit up there. Yes. Yeah. I see you have led by the Minister of Defence and the Minister of State Security. Is there a sense of deep fear of unrest uh, given the the positions that your two colleagues hold in government? And what would you expect at just the Minister of uh, Home Affairs to just to, to, to hold this press conference, uh, press conference alone? But is that how deeply or how seriously you take tomorrow's uh, proposed stay away? No, you are you are deliberately reading the, uh, something that is not there. He uh, is a Minister of State Security, is Minister of Defence. And we normally discuss issues and matters and we work together. So they were here simply to hear what I am saying. And uh, it should not, uh, don't read what is not there that uh, uh, maybe there is something major or serious that is uh, happening. So it's, 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 it's not the reason at all. Yes? Yeah. Annie? Uh, Ronald Reagan from AFP from AFP yes uh, just a question on the demands that uh, these groups or people who are calling to us uh, stay away they have been asking the government to address their issues why are you afraid of addressing those maybe five issues corruption the number of police who got on one of our highways the issue of uh, police, what they call police brutality, they have been videos where police are beating up uh, people to death. What is the, the response from the government? I, I also met another reporter who was asking about the police brutality. Then I said, show me the video, or show me the incidents where that brutality occurred, and he failed. So if you have genuine evidence that uh, something took place, give it to us and they will take appropriate action but we will not accept a situation whereby people create images and they will try to rubbish the law enforcement the law enforcement agencies in our country no genuine issues yes trumped up issues no then you talked about roadblocks a uh, those who are driving stolen cars are very scared of roadblocks. So if your car is not stolen, if your car uh, has all its papers, uh, why should you really be worried? So just show the, the documentation to the police and you are done and you proceed. Even ourselves, when we go to roadblocks, we stop and we show our IDs and so on. Sometimes they'll say, our oh, minister chief for rising, but we stop and we comply with the with the police. Mm, I, I have two questions. Yes. Yeah. Firstly, I would like to. The repeat. The repeat. The the next one. The understand. <laughs> How do I buy the things out those? What's your my, my What's your one question? <laughs> my first question would be listening to you, Honorable, it, it sounds very much like government has banned any demonstrations regarding uh, the environment, even when the corners of the demonstrators have not called for violent action. Maybe if it's a case, it's not on the corners of the of, of the of those who are calling for, for the demonstrations. According to them, we have spoken to them. They are disowning any other types of violence. Then secondly, it also appears that the uh, government is not taking any responsibility whatsoever for the grievances that are, uh, that, that the citizens are actually uh, asking it to, to, to address. A government is a system. If you have a grievance against a, an entity, there is an appropriate government agency ready to deal with the matter. But if you gather your friends 
and you go to the street and you block cars and you say because I have a grievance I think you should be arrested with the police because there are proper channels to address any grievances that anybody has secondly your first uh, uh, question relating to demonstrations the, it's very clear in the constitution what you need to do if you want to demonstrate and follow the law and the police will give you protection actually but if you elect not to follow the law the, the police have a right to protect the other law-abiding citizens whose rights you are now infringing upon so uh, we say freedom of speech but you also have the freedom to be wrong and the freedom to be corrected like in this particular case at their home yes. must stay, away. stay away from from where and you still want to get paid <laughs> but you can't have it both ways can't you see you are being unreasonable you want to be paid and you want to be paid on time but you don't want to come to work no that's childish in my view very very childish in my view how about if you then come to work the next day and that work is no no longer there somebody more willing to work has, has come but the, the the employer had already planned that you will be you produce so many loaves of bread so that he can sell so people are being affected by your absence so the employer has the right to find a more suitable empl employee who can make uh, who can be productive in a given company so if you elect to stay at home stay at home but don't come back but it depends on how many people are on the weekend because the majority of people who be staying at work, most of them are the vendors who are in the streets uh, staying during the day. So if they stay home, it's that a problem. Don't uh, talk for the vendors. Uh, I'm just no, no, I'm giving a wrong example. Don't talk about the vendors. The vendors are so eager to sell all the way up to midnight. They are very eager where people are, that's where vendors are. So you, you want to hide behind the vendors and uh, try to, to create chaos in the disorder. That is what home affairs is quite against. We want orderliness in this country, orderliness in this town. And we also want you to be orderly yourself. Uh, if you like to, not to come to work, uh, you use your sick leave, your... Uh, there are also leave days that you are given, so you can't uh, you can't really talk about government that I'm I'm electing not to come. Newspaper runs the query and deliver. It must be really courier. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but but also the oh. if there is an issue of concern, why is it that people are not interested in resolving the issue at hand? Government has always had its doors open so that they can deal with any issues that the employees are worried about, citizens are worried about. This government has always been pro-people and always uh, are answering to people's issues and, and concerns. But when you then elect to go to a foreign embassy to get ideas or to be funded by a foreign embassy in order to take action, for me, you are no longer you are no longer yourself. You are an agent of a foreign country, and to me, uh, you are you really don't deserve uh, the the you know the respect that any any normal citizen of Zimbabwe should be should be afforded. Yes, French uh, Minister, the protesters uh, who were arrested uh, on the 6th of July uh, complained that uh, the authorities used maximum force, uh, you know, to crash the, the protest. Why is it that the uh, authorities have to... Which, to, which protesters uh, are you yeah, talking yeah, about? Yeah. 
Which ones? Mfako is in particular. Mfako is in Makfuku and Epwe. Actually, we saw uh, people who had, uh, you know, uh, fractures appearing in court, complaining that the police used maximum force. Do you think that is right? It's a victim who is complaining that the police used maximum force. A victim. And you, intelligent as you are, you believe the victim more than you believe uh, the other side. I think you need also to be to be fair. You can't go to a troublemaker and then get the side of a troublemaker and a nonsense giver. You need to be, you know, as a journalist, you need also to do your research and come out with the truth. If there is evidence, as I said earlier, of any uh, uh, excess use of power, show me, and I'll deal with the policeman uh, very quickly. I mean, look, uh, Minister, the uh, evidence is there before the courts, uh, and uh, I think court records are, you know, public documents. And uh, that is the evidence that is there. The, the, the courts have got that evidence. And why is the government using maximum force? It, it has been the complaint of many protesters over the uh, past few years. Why is it that uh, this current government is using maximum force on its people? But you are still insisting that it is government that is using maximum force. But uh, we are talking uh, of unarmed people. No, know? but sometimes uh, enough is not enough to a person to whom enough is too little. So I've answered that question, and you want to keep insisting. Give us evidence, and you'll take appropriate action. Hmm? Yes. And, uh, and uh, you, are, you are talking about the previous, previous EP. Previous EP, I don't see that. How old are you? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> and the previous, I don't see that. I want to get better. What kind of government? The old government. This is the current one, now the old one. So, uh, yes. Will you consider um, bringing in the military uh, <laughs> to help with this? Uh, to help what? <laughs> Even the police are not being recalled from leave. We are going to leave. They are all going there because there's, there is really nothing there. We have sufficient contingent of police to deal with any eventuality. So feel free to go anywhere in this country. You are you will enjoy the full protection of ZRP. The army can you should stay in the barracks and do what they want. Say which is a good tower for my soldier without change a story. What is a good tower? I had to ask that. I was so we we also have got to inform you clearly there, there is no need for the army because the police. This is their daily bread. They they can handle any eventuality throughout this country. Uh, Mr. Singer, Zimbabwe is a very yeah, lovely name. name. Uh, my name is Blessed Mshang. I'm the news day. Uh, <coughs> seeing that Zimbabwe is a very religious country, and we, uh, we we have a lot of people who believe in prophets. We have had prophets from Sunday. Uh, where, where one prophet, Makandiwa, has, has prophesied that there's going to be a turmoil and uh, peacekeepers are going to be brought in because the government is refusing to listen to its people. Um, do you foresee that situation? What do you think about the prophets? We have also seen ministers going to Makandiwa's church saying that they believe in it. I saw that the, the paper, that paper, or all the opposition papers, had the headline is similar to that. We do not run a country on prophets. We run a country on the policies that we have. So any uh, person who, who, who really breaks the law in this country, whether a prophet or an individual, they will be dealt with smoothly, properly and correctly <coughs> by the ZRP. They have the capacity, they have the resources, they have the training, and they've got the personnel. So if uh, a prophet uh, comes up with a prophecy, that's for the church followers to interpret the prophecy. 
But uh, the, as I said earlier, uh, Zimbabwe is a peaceful country, and uh, we want to be very grateful to ZRP and all other security agencies for the peace and the quiet that this country enjoys. Even yourself, we are convinced that uh, this is one of the most peaceful countries in the region. And you are very happy to be here. That's why you are free to ask any any questions that you want, and you get an answer immediately. <laughs> Daily news. Magasiara. <laughs> 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 So, just lastly, Minister, yeah. is government considering engaging these people who have their grievances? The, the issue, especially the issue of, of multiple roadblocks on the on the on, on the road, um, uh, and, and also the issue of really corruption in terms of the ministers who have been fingered. The, the government of the Republic of Zimbabwe was elected by the people, given a mandate to rule this country for the next five years. And after that five years, we will seek a new mandate from the people of Zimbabwe. And I'm quite convinced that given our programs, they will still choose us as their party of choice. Any Zimbabwean, regardless of our color, creed, de denomination, profit or not, they are all free to get services from this government. And we have created various agencies to assist in that process. So we, we are always engaging with our people, no matter what happens. And uh, so even yourselves, you know, you, you may not necessarily like, uh, uh, you may not be really the, you may not quite, quite like us, but we'll engage with you so that we can give you additional information so that uh, you can enrich your papers and then they get uh, more readers and, uh, and so on. So feel free. This is an important one, Minister. Oh. Uh, you, you were talking about... Um, in Logan, I'm sure. But I don't think it is. 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 No, but we are simply telling anybody in Zimbabwe, every Zimbabwe, and even non Zimbabweans, that whatever you do, do it within the confines of the law. If you don't do that, ZRP and, uh, will really be compelled to take action, and they will not hesitate to do so. So figure it out, whatever that, that prophet you are talking about said. And if it's not within the confines of the law, you should be able to predict what will happen. Minister, can I get you allow me to rephrase this question and put it this way? Uh, <coughs> You were talking about the media, uh, the social media being awash with uh, certain messages. And one of those messages uh, is that uh, President Mugabe must step down. Do you accept as a government that uh, President <coughs> Mugabe's administration has failed the people of Zimbabwe as they claim? No. Uh, the individual that you are talking about was given a chance to vote for a presidential candidate of his choice. And I don't know who he voted for, but the majority of Zimbabweans and ourselves, we voted for the president, the president Robert Gabriel Mugabe. And that vote meant he's got five years to, to rule this country. Then we go to seek a further mandate from the people. So if this guy, Iedem Kadzwaki, what decided to say to and Chadi Mugabe, Nikayosi Yotinoda Mugabe, Totera Ie. It's really, I, I think it's a little bit on the silly side. That's not how countries are run. I mean, you won't know that somebody up with Papa, what was the girl my good day, Mumba Mamuri, Momondu, that we ain't in. Who are you? Tenga Yaku, Karakirita Patiaki. 
So do you get serious over there? Hahaha. No, you can't. You can't. So important. Yes. Do you believe the Zambian government has done justice? The money that was given, given the economic situation, do you believe they done justice? Not only not only the perspective, but as a government, do you believe that they done justice to the people of Zimbabwe? You say it gives you your vote. Your vote is meaningful. Are you quite serious? About that question, yes, you should have asked that question to Changirai and uh, his henchmen who went throughout the world to campaign for sanctions, and those sanctions are the ones that we are battling with. So, you are asking us as the victims of sanctions to talk about the sanctions. Ask Changirai why did he choose to go in a campaign to get us sanctions. And I don't even understand that. I know you very well. I thought you were clever because, <laughs> because uh, Changrai, you yeah. know, he went all over and uh, was seeking impose sanctions on Mugabe, impose sanctions on on Zanu PF. So these are the sanctions. So you should join us and uh, tell the the Zimbabwean uh, population that this, those sanctions are hurting us. Changrai should go back to his masters and uh, say, please. I made a mistake. Remove those sanctions. Let me follow up. When you promised in 2013 to get sanctions, you were ready. Mm -hmm. And you told people about the criminal job. Mm -hmm. With yes. sanctions, with mm -hmm. sanctions there, mm -hmm. not, 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 not another came mm -hmm. after 2013. Simply put, you told the people of Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. given these sanctions, as an appeal, we'll get 2.2 million jobs. Given these sanctions, we'll get a, 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 a 10 trillion yeah. economy. Mm -hmm. By this Saturday, by by 2017. So now, what has changed now? The promises were there, same area, same environment. What has changed to warrant you to go to them with something you should yeah, but, you I, them again? but to you tell you the truth, before you answer, can I just no, I don't understand why you are so waked up uh, to defend the uh, Changre. Actually, I'm surprised, actually. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it is so clear that the sanctions are hitting this economy. The sanctions are hitting this economy. Why are you so waked up that, uh, uh, you know, uh, really Changrai did something worthwhile? No. Go and ask Changrai to remove sanctions and you will see. Maybe with due respect, yeah. the sanctions were, were, were been there since 2001 or so. Back. But they, and, and the promises were made in 2018. No, no, no. The, intensi the, the intensity of sanctions year one is different with the intensity of the same sanctions on year 12 and 13. Minister, you know, just, just a follow-up on that question. If you are giving Changrai so much credit that you can actually grant call sanctions from outside government, then they affect the government. So why can't you listen to a promise in Poland who also from outside government writes and says that they must go? But you are considering defeat from someone who is a government player who is not in Changrai. <laughs> no, Shangrai is a political party which is a position and his position is that uh, he was there to protect white interests when the land reform was introduced. So he is uh, dancing to, the, to, the, to his master's voice. Now if you say, I, I don't know Mkwanans personally actually, or even what, anything that he has said, so you are giving credence to Mkwanans who really I do not know. I don't know who Mkwanans is. It's just like you saying uh, this should not happen. It depends with the, the power that you have and the control that you have over the issue that you are, you are talking about. So Changria has power? He has power over the whites who are imposing sanctions because those are the ones he is working for. He's not working for the Zimbabweans. Honorable, what happened to, to, to the policies, to the sanctions and policies that were imposed? So you want us to tell you the sanctions passing policies so that you can report? <laughs> yeah, what happened? Because you promised sanctions passing policies. In when you were seeking the same fresh money. No, my point is, do you want us to tell you what those measures are? The question is, what have they achieved? No, no. Do you want us to tell you what they have achieved so that you know what yes. they are? Yes. Yeah, we won't tell you. We <laughs> don't see any... No, you don't see because no matter how much uh, we show you, you will not see because your mind is uh, 
clearly made that uh, you can't see. <laughs> <laughs> the economy is showing signs of failure. Would you agree with me that the economy is failing? Or you disagree with uh, No, I agree with you that uh, the the sanctions imposed on us, which Changrai went out to seek, have a negative impact on the livelihoods of Zimbabwe. And you agree with me too? <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> I'm just coming out of a meeting where the U.S. ambassador uh, to Zimbabwe was saying that uh, the sanctions uh, that this government uh, is talking about are not, uh, you know, imposed on government. The sanctions are not imposed on the government of Zimbabwe, but on individuals. Thank you. So Zimbabwe is not a fight. That's what but, is, what's your reaction? But, but you know what? Uh, I thought you were quite a clever young man. You, Zidera is all over the show. Even uh, my paper, my gadgets are So just read Zidera and you see. And I, I, I could emb ambassador Chayanga Taurezo. I'm actually very disappointed. I don't think he understands what his government is doing. Please assist us to, to convince him that uh, Zidera is negative effects on the Zimbabwean general public. We are going to try to Thank you very much for the vibrant debate and for all the issues. <coughs> and uh, uh, we, will, we will stay in touch. He will call you again when there are other issues of concern.